So as some who are listening may know, uh, the Jersey Devil is an infamous myth known almost worldwide. And I know it because I didn't grow up too far from where the Jersey Devil is purportedly from. So being that I'm kind of from that area, I might have a story about, I want to say, a run-in with the Jersey Devil, a, a trip to his, his nest, kind of kind of what was what was said to be an, an area that he he pranced around previously um it was it was quite it was quite an interesting experience and you know i i think the more we talk about stories like this the more i'll be able to tell because the area around where the jersey devil is in the wharton state forest it's probably about an uh, we'll say a good hour from the jersey shore and it's just this pocket of of woods that you know th there's camping there's this there's um there's some river systems there some cabins there there's really a lot going on there and you know people i could go on and on but if you grew up around the area there's there's stories that everyone has that your friends have from going off some back roads in Wharton State Forest not about the Jersey Devil sometimes he finds his way into these stories but it could be cults and just general vagrancy, but uh, you know, sometimes it gets close to the paranormal. So, what I'm gonna tell is the time where I was back there, and you know, as we go on, there, there might be some more to bring up. But I'm gonna talk about one specific instance, and this involves Carranza Memorial. And the reason I was visiting the Carranza Memorial is because there's an old website called the Shadowlands Haunted Places Index, which. We're going to have to do a full episode on it at some point because it's a relic of old internet that talks about haunted places. It's supposed to be a compendium of haunted locations across the country. But one of them was supposedly this place called Carranza Memorial. And it's the gravesite for a famous Mexican pilot who was on his way back from New York City who crashed his plane in this area in the Pine Barrens. If you want to read on about Emilio Carranza's story, it's interesting. But his gravesite is supposedly haunted. I wouldn't call it his gravesite. There's there's a memorial there for him. The exact location where he's crashed and buried probably isn't where that is in the Pine Barrens. But the side note about this memorial is that it's wedged so deeply in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey that supposedly it's also the nest of the Jersey Devil. So when people go out there, they're either going to see Emilio Carranza's ghost, the Jersey Devil. There, there, there could be anything. There could be anything going on out there. So I kind of, kind of will go in a mix about visiting this memorial, having an experience with some mutilated cattle, and getting kind of chased out of there by some truck. You know, forty minutes away from the woods, following me almost to my home. So. It all started where, again, as I was saying, we were looking up this Carranza Memorial on the Haunted Places Index. So we went out there, and you know, one of the stories around it is that if you pull up and you you blink your lights three times and yell "Emilio, Emilio!" out the window, he'll he'll you'll you'll see a plane, a ghost plane, flying through the air. Which now that I say it out loud, is kind of interesting because just like usually the, it's ghost ships, <laughs> just like Bloody Mary, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a very uh, technical, wondrous feat of a version of Bloody Mary, where there's <laughs> a ghost plane instead of Bloody Mary herself. But well, what we did was my buddy and I we got out there, and it's dark. And when you're out there, it's it's pitch black. Your radio goes out, your phone goes out. You're in it. You're in it. So when you run into people, you know there's no way to immediately call for help. If your tire goes flat, there's no there's no real way to call for help. So w when we got out there, it's probably about once you're in the woods, another half hour before you hit the memorial. So it's a lot of driving deep into Wharton State Forest. So when when, you, when we reached it, um, you know, we, we got out with our flashlights. We walked around. We kind of, uh, you know, yelled, Emilio, Emilio, kind of, you know, did everything. There's some pennies on the monument that people leave for Emilio. And if you take one, supposedly it's bad luck. So you have to make sure if you take one, you put it back. And obviously, if you're, if you're, you know, an irritating little child, you'll take the coin and not put it back. So hopefully you get bad luck if you do that. But when we did walk around the area, we started hearing some rustling in the bushes. Uh, and looking further into the woods, 
we could just see a bunch of bushes kind of waving back and forth, but all in a consistent direction as if something were running through them very quickly. You know, easy to dispel as a deer, uh, something like that. Uh, so we, we, we didn't think much of it, but when you're in the middle of nowhere and it's just the two of you, uh, it's, it's a little bit frightening. So we, we investigated the memorial for about 20 minutes and got back in our cars. And when we were driving back, the second we turned on my car and the headlights went on, there was a truck directly behind us that turned their headlights on as well. So that means that we didn't know that there was a truck right behind us the entire time watching what we were doing and waiting for me to get back in my car to leave. I don't know if it's the kind of guardian of Koran's memorial, but we'll get deeper into this as we go Optimus along with Prime. this show. <laughs> yeah, it was Optimus Prime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are, this is some weird New Jersey stuff. This is a classic trope in weird New Jersey. And I'm going to have tons of weird New Jersey st stories to tell as, as, as we keep doing episodes of this show. But one of them is when you go on these back roads, you'll have these ghost trucks that follow you that seemingly come out of nowhere and chase you around. Could it be kids having fun? You know, but usually when you look back and this is what happened with us, you know, we were driving away and this truck was following us. And when I looked back, you couldn't see people in the car. You just see outlines of people. You see shadows of people, kind of, oh, kind of okay. following you. You know, and it, that's what makes it a little bit frightening. They're like, they're like these specters, you know. And as we were driving along, you know, we heard this high pitched screeching out my window. So imagine you, you're you're driving through the the pine barrens. You're, you're seeing these oncoming trees as your your headlights flicker off of them. You open up your window and you're hearing this screeching with, with, a, with a car following you out of this area. And as we were going, I, I started speeding because it's like, we got to get out of here. I got, I got no recourse. I'm in a, I'm in a Mitsubishi Galant and this, this is a ghost pickup truck following us. <laughs> so we were in trouble. And as I was going through, I saw on the side of the road a desiccated disemboweled and and i i know you know a little bit about this from your research into say like dulcy dulcy base or uh, cattle mutilation i saw mm. this disemboweled carved almost like it was like through incisive teeth marks deer cattle on the side of the road it wasn't just dead with its neck broken like when it gets hit by something it was hollowed out in this really mm. specific way and was kind of pushed back into the woods a little bit and i saw for a moment and my friend looked at me he's like did you see that did you see that that was literally some mutilated cattle right there and this kind of reminds me of was it decayed from, in any part like was it there for a long time it didn't look like it it looked it looked a little fresh it looked oh, fresh but okay. carved up did big you get time how, you know how far away uh, were you from it did you just like pass it by quickly well we were getting chased by the ghost pickup oh, truck cool. so yeah we saw <laughs> i saw it so imagine okay. the time it would take where you immediately see it in your headlights and you're driving quickly so i'd say i got a good look at it for about seven seconds as we were moving along mm. but this thing got this thing got carved up so i'm thinking and i didn't realize this till later i got the truck following me we heard these screeches we, we, we heard these impossibly fast and saw movement through these bushes around us while we were outside of our car. And now I'm seeing this desiccated, mutilated deer corpse. It reminded me of in the book Dracula. <laughs> There's a part where, I don't know, they're all in the house. Dracula just got them biting someone. They're theorizing about what's going on. And then they look out the window and they see a werewolf running around. And it's never really explained why there is a werewolf it was kind of thrown into the book it kind of it reminded me of that it's like what's going on you got the truck you got you got the desiccated deer you got you know you got the screeching you got the weird movements in the bushes it's just everything's going on all at once so we we <laughs> We sped out of there as quickly as we could. And as we get out of the, you know, the main Warden State Forest there and closer towards civilization, this truck, it's still following us. And I still couldn't see who in the back seat it was. So there was no reason for this vehicle to follow us from that forest to about, let's say, two streets away from where I was living at the time. So I made a quick, final, erratic turn 
to kind of pull him pull him away from us. And when I looked behind, disappeared completely, gone. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So this this is kind of like a a weird culmination of you know, new you know, Jer- South Jersey, Wharton State Forest, Pine Barrens lore that you know everyone's got their version of it and this is one that that i'm sharing for now and i also have a few more in me that that we'll talk about some other time but you know we we all know what the jersey devil is a lot of people and the story about it is you know this the the the, the, to be really vague and you can look it up in your own time because i don't think this is what it's about but it was about a woman not too far from this town tabernacle in new jersey back in colonial times who had a bunch of kids and i think she was having her 13th kid and she really didn't want to have it and she said let this 13th one be a devil <laughs> so when she had her kid it just sprouted out of her stomach and flew away and and the jersey devil is supposedly a horse-like animal that can stand on two legs and has wings it just looks like, and has a tail you so know, <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the origin story of the jersey devil how like she had a 13th kid and cursed him and yeah. all that but my thinking is like, okay, you're frustrated that you're having your 13th kid. How is cursing it to make it the devil more beneficial to you? Like, that doesn't I help you at all. What, like, what's the, what's your end maybe, game? <laughs> maybe it's like post-mortem depression, but like post-mortem psychosis or something. You know? <laughs> There we go. No. Pars, pars, postpartum demonic influence <laughs> possession it, yeah, depression. There you go. It's part of something else, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I bet all the people standing around were like, okay. And then the <laughs> de- demon horse just flies out of her stomach. So, yeah. It's obviously, like, uh, there's you're, tons You're having of- your 13th kid. Uh, and you're frustrated, yet you cursed him to make it even more frustrating for you. Curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, curious. I wonder why you would do that. And, you know, I think to some people listening, it might be might be something like, oh, well, that's all you saw was this, you know, this deer corpse and heard something in the bushes that could have been anything. I understand that, but the, the scale of the Jersey Devil and its impact on just, you know, broad cryptid culture is so interesting to me. I like to believe that my experience was a brush with him. So mm. the thing that I find interesting is, is that there was a show that was put together later on called Paranormal State. And it was about a, a guy who was a student at Penn State. And it's actually kind of sad after the show ended. He he, was, he struggled with alcohol. I think he got arrested for drunk driving. But he uh, he put on a ghost hunting show that got picked up by A and E was a channel, and it was a, it was a really great ghost hunting show. And one of their season finales was they went to go look for the Jersey Devil, and you can look it up online because it's. I looked before we started recording. I you searched like paranormal state Jersey Devil footage. So they went searching for the Jersey Devil n- near where I was at the Carranza Memorial. Uh. And they were able to catch a thermal image of what looks to be some sort of winged horse-like, kind of similar to the folktales Jersey Devil outline through these through through the bushes using you know advanced imagery and and a, a, you know a, as I said a thermal camera. So it's it's pretty convincing, interesting footage. Whether they just made it up for the show or not, I'll never be able to tell. But. That's probably one of the best pieces of quote unquote. I don't even want to say evidence, but it's it's an extra page to the you know now centuries long story of the Jersey Devil, and I'm happy that it's there, and I'm happy I had a moment where I can maybe tangentially say I had a brush up against it, and maybe he has some sort. Maybe that was Emilio Carranza's ghost in the truck <laughs> driving me away and yeah. saying, "Get on, get out of here!" That I'm I'm protecting you from the Jersey Devil. I I don't know, but that. that that's, it's a lot going on at once, but that's what that's what kind of weird New Jersey type stories are. They're kind of they blocked our car off, and then an albino ghost came out from under the bridge. It's it's always something strange, you know. And I I always I always like to share that. And it's funny it's it's not the only kind of semi popularly known New Jersey cryptid. There's quite a few of them. I heard about the Hoboken Monkey Man. <laughs> so. Every time I talk to people from Hoboken, they don't know what I'm talking about. It's a town that's outside of New York City that a lot of people commute to. Uh, 
commute from Jersey to New York City from, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm from Hoboken. I was like, have you seen the Hoboken Monkey Man? And they'll give you the the Hoboken Hoboken Monkey Man blank stare. They don't know what I'm talking about. So um, that's but, a monkey stare. Yeah, that's a monkey stare. So um, so. But th- that that's one of the lesser known, you know, th- there'll be some under the radar stuff there with, with some cryptids in New Jersey. So I, I got to ask, right, because you guys aren't from around here, obviously not even this country. Is there any local cryptid folklore where you guys are from? Any run ins, anything like that? A lot of what you said uh, reminded me of uh, Skinwalker Ranch, which you might know of. Um, mm, I do. The the. um. The, the truck following you, the thing with that, um, so in the book Hunt for the Skinwalker with George Knapp, he, um, he talks about how, like, uh, basically UFOs and that would, um, would take the form of, like, conventional human vehicles and chase people, so, um, Really? Like, <laughs> in, in their research, okay. they found, like, they, they'd observe, like, UFOs, like, you know, coming down and then, like, in the form of like headlights and stuff and like outlines they take the form of like a truck or like a plane or a helicopter and then go around basically harassing people (laughs) (laughs) Um, or it's maybe maybe it's not physically that it's whatever's there psychically imprinting that into your mind right they don't they're yeah they're not like you said transformers turning a truck so it's making you think you're seeing a truck chasing you maybe and that's how they disappear so quickly okay and and the um and yeah, th- those um, bleh, bleh, those chases would um, oh, that kind of phenomena would often also be followed by um, cattle mutilations. And um, what That's I found interesting, what I found about what I found interesting about cattle mutilations is that um, because it's one of the very few things you can go on the internet right now and find like 4K, like crystal clear, like unexplainable images, like right there that that you just cannot explain and um for those that are unaware um like farmers would come across like their cattle and they'd usually have like no eyeballs like there'd be like a clean precise like perfect kind of pie circle around their eyeballs and they'd have like no bones or any organs or anything inside them anymore um, mm. And seemingly, like it would all have been like sucked through their eyeballs, and any other cuts under, um, uh, like like when they observed it under a microscope or whatever, um, like they'd concluded that it could have only been done with like a surgeon's scalpel. Yeah, surgical precision, right? Yeah, and then it goes beyond like human precision as well, because the lines and the cuts are so precise that like it had to be done by a machine of some sort. And they're like remnants of like uh, radioactive decay and like some exotic metal alloys, like along the cuts and stuff. So a lot of really it's, interesting stuff. It's it's funny you say that because not far from where I'm talking about in Wharton State Forest, there's Fort Dix, which is an Air Force base where back in the day, you could probably Google this too. Uh, there were UFO sightings near Fort Dix about UFO aircraft. There's actually, you know, some infamous stories around this area of UFO sightings. And I actually have a friend whose dad back in the day was on base there. And he remembers there was a day where he claimed to, have, you know, saw UFOs and they actually shut down the base and they all had to go into some, you know, barracks or holding room while there was something going on outside with these red lights. So it just, it adds to more of the mystique of the area it's just a really and this is the thing i love about um some parts of the united states it's just a really interesting strange cut of land in a part of the country that not many people have been through to i mean these are just back roads to the jersey shore really a lot of them and then the people who live there don't really want to be bothered so yeah um you know just uh, building on on your initial point Ari, about how like sometimes ufos can take the shape of vehicles I, I love the mental image of like what's like an obscure car brand like every Daihatsu that you see on the road is actually an alien <laughs> that would be so cool <laughs> you know <laughs> just like a like hide a plain sight men in black kind of style you know <laughs> well I want to do an episode on it at some point but I swear when I was younger I saw multiple cars without drivers in them just 
moving oh, around, shit. you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I saw that when I was younger, and I was talking to my mom, and I'm like, Mom, you're not seeing... There wasn't anyone driving. I was literally saying, she's like, my son's insane. But no, it was seriously, you know, th- this was before Tesla, obviously. Not like their cars can self-drive either. But <laughs> Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe Tesla's are like predictive programming. For yeah, a, yeah, there we go. Tesla. <laughs> You want to I talk love, about narcissist love, schizophrenia? <laughs> like I predicted Teslas. There we go, dude. I, I love the idea of like some guy from the past, but he's just like seeing a Tesla, and he's like he thinks it's a ghost, and he says like, "Dude, I saw this car. It made no sound, and it was driving by itself." <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, someone who saw a Ford Model T early car got you know pushed into the future and saw a Tesla, you would think it was an alien ship. Probably. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what you would think. Or, you know, horse and buggy. So Pull up in the cyber um, truck next to a Model T, you know? <laughs> What's up? Um, but, yeah, I, I kind of just wanted to dig in a little bit more on this because I think I really love the story of the Jersey Devil because it cuts that line of – just really obvious, fanciful, unprovable folklore coupled with, you know, maybe just because it's so ingrained in that area, people in that area's psyche, it, it kind of intersects with actual true stories, accounts that are passed down, in some cases, pictures. And, you know, it had its phase where it was just a circus, I, which I used to think all of these were real when I was younger. So you can tell I'm a very gullible person when circuses say, tallest man ever it's 15 cents to see him and i'd be like wow people were so lucky back then they could literally just see the tallest man ever or one of them was jersey devil <laughs> it's like 30 cents to see the jersey devil and i think well they had just him in that room. tent so he was well they had him in that tent so he was obviously real <laughs> yeah, yeah. at some point right they weren't lying about that so there, there's just like a catalog of folklore to kind of go along with the jersey devil and there's just enough there to make you feel like people have their own accounts that are worth listening to. And then, you know, like I was saying, there's an extra piece of media floating around there from that Paranormal State show. Yeah, I'm sure there's other, you know, supposed pictures. I haven't looked too far into it. But, yeah, I, th- I think uh, – I think it. I, but you, you know what else is cool about it? I wouldn't even call the Jersey Devil a cryptid, you know? It, like I think it's something more than that. I think it's evolved more than that. A cryptid to me is, you know – you, you just say you know something like Bigfoot, which could be a, a type of mm. silverback gorilla. A, a cryptid doesn't involve some sort of demonic, otherworldly influence in its presence, right? It could just be a biological anomaly. The Jersey Devil isn't a biological anomaly if it exists. It's something that was literally spawned out of a woman into Satanhood, right? Actually, now that, that I was, think that about was sort it, of my question. Um, it could yeah. be a dumb question, but do we know that? Do we know for sure if the Jersey Devil acts in a predatory way? Like, is it really a predatory being? Or is it just acting as, like, a guardian for a certain area? Because in New Zealand, we don't really have, like, cryptid tales and all that stuff. But we have something called a Tanifa, which is uh, supposedly, nice. like, this this guardian being that, like, you know, if you intrude the area, they'll, they'll fuck you up. But their purpose is just to guard an area. And sometimes they just steal women to make them their wives. But that's that's all. <laughs> he, so he's nice. got to ball out eventually, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what did um, what did that kind of area look like pre-colonialism? Yeah. What the Wharton State Forest? Yeah, sure. Still a forest. Still a forest. It's one. Of, it's one of the last. And there's there's a lot of discussion going on around it right now. Is like, hey, this is an incredible start spot to start popping up some real estate. You know, and and people, there, there's a lot of people who are against that, which is you know that classical distinction between you know evil corporate overlords smoking a cigar and the townspeople with their uh, trying was it to always preserve a, history, a forest. Right? Like maybe maybe like way back there was like some Aztec ruins or something deep down. <laughs> right, right, right. That could be why. You know. Well, Tyson, you're kind of onto something because that area and the area that I kind of grew up in are said to be and, and this is it's like a lot of areas in the country all the schools are kind of named after indian tribes like cherokee something like uh. that um a lot of people say these places are on indian burial grounds you know and i i sometimes feel like there's entire towns that are i remember what i had a family member that was telling me that like some of these towns are cursed because they're, they're built on indian burial grounds and and you know i'm not saying i believe in 
uh, Indian um, mythology and religion, but if you're imagining it and you're willing it, you're exposing yourself to possibly demonic influence, which could be interpreted as you know an ancient Indian burial ground that's uh, that's coming back to haunt you, right? So, but mm. that's that's an age old trope that I that I don't mind exploring. So why not? But yeah, well, to put it this way, there were definitely Indian tribes settled on that land at that time, prominently. You know, mm, interesting. So that's something to think about. But I, I, it's funny that as I was saying it, it made me think about it. You know how. There was the Immaculate Conception, Jesus Christ was born from Mary, a virgin. It, it kind of feels like the Jersey Devil is an inverse of that, maybe? She wasn't a virgin, she had already had a bunch of kids, and she cursed the child as it was born, and it flew away. It's like you a know, satanic like, uh, knockoff version of, of the Immaculate Conception, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, you know, the whole, if you wake up at 3 a.m., you know, that's an inversion of the time where, you know, it's it's like, it's kind of like that. So We I have don't Immaculate know. Conception it's, at home. <laughs> <laughs> the immaculate conception in question. <laughs> I, I think I shouldn't be laughing at that as a Christian, but so, someone's got to have fun every once in a while. So, um, but yeah, I, I appreciate you guys listening to it. It's a, it's a little fanciful, but I um I, I I have a lot I have a lot loaded up in the chamber as far as this area of the U.S. and stories that I've heard and experienced. So I can't I can't wait to get into it. And another thing I'll get into is. I had a brief stint on the paranormal message board for Game Facts, where uh, <laughs> I shared nice. my. Yeah, and it's still archived. <laughs> one of the threads. I'm not going to give it away. That might be a later episode. But this adventure was cataloged there on that website. It was a, it was a very popular thread. Someone ended up making a Wikipedia scratch pad for our adventures. So there, there were some fans out there. Some little. Early internet micro fame that uh, that I haven't let go of since, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so so I appreciate. It. Thanks for thanks for listening, and yeah, I, I I forgot to mention one more time. I did you have anything that that might have happened near you? There's all kinds of weird stuff going on. I got like. What is it like Loch Ness monster or something over there? Or is that, that's Ireland, <laughs> that's, isn't it? That's I forget. In Scotland. That's in Scotland. Scotland, whatever. I yeah, should know yeah. that. I was there last year. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. There's there's plenty of stuff down here, but um, the most significant thing is very personal to me because I was the one who filmed it. <laughs> um, so really, yeah. So uh, yeah, I got a UFO on camera. Oh, <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. engaging in perfectly normal behavior because I stuck my head out the window and I was talking to it. And it did stuff for me. So, um, we'll, yeah, we'll get into that in a wow. later episode. But, that's, uh, that's a bit of a teaser. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely a <laughs> bit of a teaser. You know, it's so funny. We're talking about all of this. I have a story. And, and look, you guys know I like to tell a tall tale here and there. But I try and keep it a little real. I've only seen a UFO once in my entire life. And it actually wasn't too far from where I'm telling the story now, uh, the story from this episode. So another time we'll have to bring that up. Uh, so that that's exciting stuff. But until next time, thanks for taking an adventure with me, and uh, we'll see what's behind the scary door.